this Holy Mass is being offered on the anniversary for Andrea Costello. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter said, Rulers of the people and elders, if you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a people and asking us how he was healed, 
then I'm glad to tell you all. I will indeed be glad to tell the whole people of Israel that it was by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the one crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By this name and by no other, that this man is able to stand perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but which has proved to be the keystone for all the names in the world given to men. This is the only one by which we can be saved. The word of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. I will thank you, for you have given answers, and you are my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will, give you th- I will thank you for you have given answers, and you are my savior. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are, because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is, when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and the sheep do not belong to him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees a wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he is only a hired man and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, 
and I lay down my life for my sheep. And there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will, and as it is in my power to lay it down, so it is in my power to take it up again. And this is the command I have been given by my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, the fourth Sunday of Easter throughout the Church is the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Vocation means our calling from Almighty God. The very first (coughs) calling is our baptism. We are called to become part of the body of Christ, the Catholic Church, one holy and apostolic. And as our baptism unfolds, as it were, or the consequences of it, the other sacraments, confirmation, the Holy Eucharist, communion, confession, then we have, if you like, a development of our vocation because we are baptized. But what is it that God is calling us to do and more importantly to be in our adult lives? And we don't need to wait until we are adult to pray about that and to seek that. The vocation of marriage, a man and a woman coming together, leaving their own families in the sense that they begin a new life together. They don't abandon their families, obviously, but they begin a new life together as husband and wife. And they have children, if God so wills. The family is the heart of every vocation. But there are other vocations within the church, particularly the priesthood and the religious life. We know the religious life, the reverend sisters here in the parish. They have been called to devote their lives to the service of God and the church. To become mothers, not in the sense of being a wife and mother, but a mother to the people whom they serve. And then to the priesthood itself. And that's where particularly today's gospel about Jesus as the Good Shepherd is so important. We call today Good Shepherd Sunday. Because if the priest is anything, he has to be a shepherd and a good shepherd. Despite his weaknesses, despite his sins and failings, despite all the things that he gets wrong at times, the priest must be a good shepherd. When I was a deacon the best part of 35 years ago now, I was ordained in Africa in a country called Swaziland. And I was teaching students for the priesthood. And I also worked in another country very near Swaziland in southern Africa called Lesotho, now known as the Mountain Kingdom. And it is, it's a country full of mountains, Horses are the main mode of transport, certainly in the mountains. They're more reliable than cars or jeeps. 
And in the mountains, I remember going in Lesotho to see the shepherd boys. Somebody took me up there to meet them. And these are boys who, for several months of the year, don't go to school. They live in the mountains, looking after the sheep and the goats, particularly the sheep. And their families would come up from the village, wherever they lived, to bring them food and clothing and whatever they needed. But they rarely came down from the mountains, for weeks on end sometimes, because they had to look after the sheep and follow them around. They had to make sure that the sheep were not in danger. Sometimes sheep can get stuck, trapped in the rocks or in a gorge. And one of the jobs of the shepherd boy was to make sure that this did not happen, or if it did happen, that the sheep was rescued. And there were shepherd men, adults there as well, but it was the boys who stayed with the sheep most of the time. They had big blankets where they would wrap themselves at night time and go to sleep. And these children, I'm not advocating we should send our children into the mountains to look after sheep. I'm just telling you what it was like. These children, these boys, were 9, 10, up to about 14 years of age. So, say, in our terms, something like, uh, I don't know, year 5 to year 9. Now, the kids now are listening. Oh, I wish I wasn't at St. Michael's or St. Bond's. I wish I was up in the mountains looking after the sheep. No, it was a very hard job. But the whole point is this that the shepherd goes with his sheep. Whether it's in the mountain or the valley, whether it's winter or summer, the shepherd does not abandon the sheep. And that is what Jesus is referring to in the gospel this morning when he speaks about the difference between the hired man and himself the good shepherd because the hired man is only doing it for the money and if the wolf comes if the danger comes then he runs away he doesn't bother about the sheep the good shepherd does not abandon his sheep and the priest is a shepherd and vocations to the priesthood are made in heaven but they are worked out here on earth. They are worked out here on earth. <clears throat> they don't come ready-made. <clears throat> Priests come from families. They go to schools, colleges, universities. They have jobs before they become a priest. Many of them do. Men might enter the priesthood when they're young, 18, 19, 20, or they might be older in their 30s, 40s, or even older than that. But whatever the circumstances, whatever the age, priests come from a family, they come from a parish, they come from a school, and vocations must to the priesthood must be encouraged. It always saddens me to hear when a young man says to me, as sometimes they do, oh, I said to my parents, I think I may have a calling, a vocation to the priesthood. And the mother or father says, oh, no, that's not for you. Oh, no, no, you've got to be a doctor, you've got to be a lawyer, you've got to be X, Y, and you've got to make money. The family needs you to make money, not to be a priest. That's sad, isn't it? Because that is denying a calling from God. And there's a wonderful expression in Latin, Deus providebit, God will provide. God will provide. And that's true in all our lives. 
And I'm speaking primarily spiritually, not materially. To become a Catholic priest is not to be making mega bucks, I can assure you. But what it is, is to serve the people of God. And God will bless and God will provide. Now in the Diocese of Brentwood this year, we have two ordinations, new priests. One, in fact, was just a few weeks ago before Easter, Father Matusz Melek. He's from Slovakia. A young man, he's not even 30 yet, I think, or about 30, but he was a student in London, <clears throat> and he attended his local parish up in Chingford and got friendly with the parish priest and the priest, very good priest, Father Francis Coveney, encouraged him. <clears throat> while he was studying, Matouche lived in the priest's house for a while. And I know when Father Francis was ill and I had to go there about four or five years ago to look after the parish for a while, Matouche was a godsend. He did everything for me except say Mass, obviously. But he got the church ready, he got the vestments ready, he showed me where everything was because I, I didn't know. And then he went to the seminary and to train in Allen Hall in Westminster, Chelsea. And after six years now, thank God, has been ordained a priest. And when he was ordained at the church in Chingford, his two uncles, who were priests, were there. And they clothed him in the vestments, the stole and the chasuble. And his auntie, who was a nun, a reverend sister, she brought up the offertory gifts to present to the bishop for the uh, new priest. The bishop then gives the chalice and the pattern to the new priest. And we have another ordination in July in Loughton, which is, again is not far from here, it's just uh, on the central line. And Deacon Frank Westcott will be ordained as a priest. Now Frank's older, he's well into his 40s, and he was working as an optometrist. In fact, he was the chief optometrist, you know, testing your eyes at Specsavers in Romford. So we joked with him. We said, now he's becoming a priest. He must give all the priests a free eye test. Seriously. He had a career, a profession, but then knew that God was calling him, despite the good work he was obviously doing as, a, as, as, as an optometrist, helping people with their eyes, testing their eyes, prescribing their glasses, and many other things. Nevertheless, that God was calling him to be a priest. And he's just completed his studies at, or is completing his studies at St. Mary's College, Oscott in Birmingham. He will be ordained in Loughton, where, where I shall be this coming week. I'm supplying the priest there is on retreat. And the priest there, Father Adrian Lowe, is the vocation director for the diocese. He is the priest who looks after those who are inquiring about vocation. And Father Adrian himself was a late vocation. He was a librarian, worked with books. So you don't have to be 18 or 19 or 20. You can be older as well. The call to the priesthood, the shepherd, bringing Christ in and through the sacraments of the church to his holy people. So to the young people at Mass today, and there are a lot of them, think about marriage, getting married eventually. Think about becoming a reverend sister. Think about becoming a priest. We need men and women who are good husbands and wives. We need women who will enter the religious life. And we need men, young and perhaps older, who will become priests. From this parish, St. Michael's in East Ham, you already have a priest. You know Father Callum, 
Callum Young. He's not serving in this diocese, he's in Ireland, but he's from this parish. He was here just after Christmas on holiday and said Mass a number of occasions. It's so important that we see the priest not only as the shepherd, and please God the good shepherd, but the priest as being one of us in terms of our parishes, our schools, and so on. St. Bonaventure's school has a great tradition of priests, Franciscans and Arsacen priests and others. Amongst its pupils, also its teachers, Father Neil Brett, who is at Barking. He was parish priest a few years ago at Our Lady of Compassion in Upton Park. He was a teacher at St. Bonaventure's. Then he was deputy head teacher of St. Thomas More School in Westcliff, where one of our servers here this morning attends. Then he became a headmaster of his own school down in Portsmouth, and then he answered the call to the priesthood. So I'm just giving you these examples so that, particularly for the priesthood, the young men and men perhaps not so old, a bit older rather, who are here this morning, you can think, pray, and reflect. And if at any point you have an awareness, and this goes for girls, women, about becoming sisters, if you have any intimation, any thought about that, speak to the priest, speak to the sisters, because we're here to help you and to encourage you. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With the shepherd of our Jesus, what is more natural than that we should confidently set our needs before him, praying to God our Father? That Jesus' parables may bring comfort to Pope Francis and the bishops and inspire them in their shepherding task for the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. That all who acknowledge Jesus as Lord may be drawn together in ever closer harmony and so fulfill the prayer of the Good Shepherd that all may be one. Lord, receive our prayer. On this, on this the world's day of prayer of, for vocations, that the Lord may raise up many vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, especially from our own parish community. Lord, in your mercy, for those who, gave, who have gone astray like the lost sheep, that they will hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, the guardian of their souls, and return to his fold. Lord, in your mercy, receive our We pray for all our sick, especially Father Victor Camillary, Colin Smith, Philippa Anya, John Crangle, Tom and Betty Morgan, Seamus Pepper, Gemma Faulkner, Bernardia Santi, 
Fred Finch and Sarita Nilajani. Nilajani. We also pray for John Vincent. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Melvin J Josa, who sadly drowned in the sea in India aged 17 years. We pray for his family at this time. We pray also for the repose of the soul of Veronica Dolin, also for all his anniversaries occur this week. Father Arthur Ryan, Father Michael N. Wright, Canon Thomas Smith, Father Simon Sullivan, Father Miles O'Reilly, and George Stokes. We also pray for Lorna Lobo for her anniversary. I pray particularly for Canon Smith. He heard my first confession when I was a little boy, age seven. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. We ask Mary, our mother, to join with us in our prayers as we say Hail Mary. And we sing the, the Regina Chaley, number 616, Our Lady's Easter Song, number 616. Regina Chaley, letare, alleluia, qui a quemero isti potare, alleluia. Alleluia, for he whom you were worthy to bear, Alleluia, has risen as he said, Alleluia, pray for us to God, Alleluia. Almighty God and Father, listen to these, the prayers of your people, and grant that we may always seek and do your holy will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of
by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life in his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in your pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please remember to take home with you a copy of the parish newsletter. Everything you need for the coming week is in it. Tuesday is the National Feast Solemnity of the Patron of England, St. George. He's somewhere there. We've got the statue of St. George there. We've got a real live George there. But it's, uh, the statue will be brought out. Uh, this was for the Kerala Mass yesterday. But um, please do come on uh, Tuesday, if you can, for the morning Mass. There will be Mass this afternoon at 4 o'clock here for the Syro Malabar uh, Holy Kurbana. Father Bob forgot, he tells me, and apologizes. He didn't put in the newsletter or didn't have it put in about the first Holy Communion children meeting next Saturday, 9.15, here in the church. Is that right, sister? Next Saturday, 9.15, children and your mums and dads here in the church. The Life in the Spirit seminars will start here on Tuesday in the church, and they will run for successive Tuesdays. There are posters in the entrance to the church, and there is a link QR code, if you know what that is. I, I, I think I know what it is, but I'm not making a baby. Anyway, for which you can register to attend. All are welcome. Please come to the church 7.15 Tuesday evening. There was a youth mass at the 6 p.m. vigil mass yesterday. So many young people um, attending. And we thank the young people for their participating and leading in the sense of readers and video prayers and music, etc., etc. And we invite more young people to join in helping with this. There will be, after this Mass, so now, after Mass, in the school hall, the youth club. So young people are invited to attend. The retiring collection today, as you may have guessed from the homily, is for the Brentwood Ecclesiastical Education Fund. That is, the money that goes directly to training priests. I mentioned we have two men, one already ordained this year, another one being ordained in a couple of months' time. We have at least one, if not two, young men entering the seminary in September. It runs not just on prayer, but it also has to run on your generosity. So please, please, as you can when you leave the church this morning. There is a, a local premiership team, um, which your prayers didn't do very much for, I regret to say, last week. They should have beaten Fulham, but they didn't. They're now playing Crystal Palace this afternoon. Your prayers are requested. And during the week at home, they are entertaining uh, at the London Stadium some club I think I've heard of called Liverpool. So please do pray for West Ham. The Lord be with you. And in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And we, just before the, the final hymn, the organ is still out of uh, commission, so pray that that gets fixed or we get a new one. We need it by the time the bishop comes in a couple of weeks' time. We now sing our, uh, our, our final hymn.